Lou, who I am not going to attempt his last name or her last name because I don't really know and I'm horrific with last names and first names. It's probably not Lou, but I'm going to interpret it as such. And if I've done it wrong, please correct me using some tool of correction that, heck, I don't even care. You can pick up the phone and call me and just tell me what your name is and how to pronounce it correctly because... It just I'm bad at it. Um, heck, I don't even. Uh, oftentimes, I forget my children's names. But um, so now I just call them number one, two, three, and four. So um, which is easier? Anyway, here nor there. Um, so Lou asked about um, the difference between a DRL and a DRD. Um, we could probably just end the video saying there isn't a difference, but that's just not true. Uh, so at some level, there's, there's a lot of similarities, right? Differential reinforcement of low rates of behavior, DRL. A DRD is a differential reinforcement of a diminishing rate of behavior. Are you satisfied yet? Me neither. All right, so here we go. DRL. We got behavior way up here, all right? I, I don't know what up here is. Just bear with me, okay? So DRL, behavior's way up here, and we're saying we don't want it up there. We want it down here, all right? So what I'm going to do in a DRL is differential reinforcement of a low rate. So as long as this behavior happens down in this range, below here, it's going to earn a reinforcer. If it happens up here, extinction, we're going to ignore it, all right? So DRL, you have this hard line, right? Here's a line in the sand. It's a red line, whatever you want to say. Boom, if the behavior happens below it, it earns a reinforcer. It's that simple. Um, that's DRL. DRD is a differential reinforcement of a diminishing rate. Okay, so as long as the behavior during the period of observation is lower than it was during the previous period, you can go ahead and reinforce it. So I'm going to set up a very artificial example as a, as a visual for you. So behavior's back up here. This time, as long as it's anything below this, it's going to get a reinforcer. So now all we have to do is make sure it's below this and we get a reinforcer and below this and we get a reinforcer and below this and we get a reinforcer and so on and so forth. You're reinforcing that diminishing rate of behavior. Uh, so they both have the same final effect, which is a lower rate of responding for whatever the response is that you're trying to reduce. Um, I just think that uh, DRD fits more along the logical lines of a shaping procedure. So you're trying to shape a lower rate of responding. So it's easier for the organism, the person to achieve this level, then easier to achieve this level rather than this gigantic jump. Um, I think if you were to put this with a type of experimental design, if you want to link it up with one of those, you might think of a changing criterion design. So changing criterion design is going to be a little bit more rigid than what a DRD is, um, but they could be used interchangeably, I suppose. You could just set a new criteria each time, and as long as you achieve it, you're earning reinforcers. Things are a little different with the changing criterion, but you get the idea. I'm just trying to help you draw some more connections. So ask more questions. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That was a video on behavior analysis. If you like it, please share it. Please subscribe. Please donate. We'd like to eat. I'm hungry.